Our next story was something that I stumbled across when I was looking up art, when I was looking at cryptids. We did Cryptic Week a while back, and I still have a ton of cryptids. Over, those were just the ones that I picked out. This, for this story, we're going to have to go south, or, assuming that you're in America, if you're in Europe, you're going to go west. And if you're already in South America, just kind of stay where you're at. Because we're going to South America. That sounded bad. I'm not saying you need to stay where you're at. But this story is going to take place in South America, in Chile. And we have quite a few Chile listeners, too, so that's always cool. This is the story of the... Now, I do have to warn you, if you've listened to this show long enough, you know there's going to be quite a few mispronunciations. No disrespect. It's just we're going to be talking about some terminology that necessarily doesn't have pronunciation guides online. We're going to be talking about a creature called the Imbunche. The Imbunche is actually, I think, one of the creepiest sounding cryptids because it is a human that is twisted into a creature. And twisted, I mean literally. So the story goes like this. You take a boy nine days after he was born and the local warlocks in this area of Chile, it actually was thought to be mostly around what was known as the Place of Seagulls, which was almost, the Incas considered it a dark region. It's 700 miles south of Ch- the Chilean capital, Santiago. So the Incas are like, ah, I don't go there. And this is where this story takes place, and mostly on the island of Chileo. I think that's how you pronounce it. So that's the name of the island. I just don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. But anyway, so the Imbunche... So the Mbunche was you take a boy who's nine days old. A warlock will either kidnap the child or pay the parents for the child. And there's a couple different ways you make an Mbunche. One of them is you take their right leg and you bend it around to the back of their neck and you make it so it's stuck there. So now they have one leg and two arms and they kind of scurry around. You start off just feeding them like goat milk. But if the warlock is in a particularly giving mood, he can dig up a corpse and feed you corpse meat. And your job is to guard the cave of the warlock so it's a lookout. And sometimes he sends you out on missions. And even though you never get to learn to speak language, you can only talk in guttural tones. Just by being around the warlock so much, you'll pick up magic spells. Now that one, that description, I thought, that's horrifying. That description's actually quaint. Compared to the other way Mbunches are made. And this came out during a witch trial in 1880. So during the witch trial of 1880, or warlock trial of 1880, the Chilean government rounded up a ton of warlocks. There was actually about 100 arrests. And this was on the island of Chiloe. And it, there was a group called the Righteous Province. And they operated throughout the, like from 1850 to 1880. And probably before that, but they were practicing warlocks. And that's when people started to hear about the Mbunche. So this was their method for creating an Mbunche. They would take a kid between six months and a year old, so a little bit older. Same thing, buy it or kidnap it. What they do is when they first get it, they have to unbaptize it. And their method of unbaptizing is for 15 days, you soak them in freezing cold river water. Not for 15 days, like for 24 hours a day, but every day you have to take them out there and soak them in freezing cold river water. And then you basically put a tourniquet around the kid's head and you twist it a little bit each day. And then you let it adjust and then you twist a little bit more. And you keep doing that until the head is completely turned 180 degrees around and so it's looking by it through its back. I mean, not through it, but it's like it can see its spine. Its nose is vertical with its spine. Then they cut a hole in the right shoulder blade, take the right arm, and put it into that hole. So you put the hand into that hole by your shoulder blade, and then you heal it up. So again, now they have two legs and one arm. But they're still this deformed creature. Again, they're fed on either uh, animal milk or human flesh. And the rest of it's the same. They guard the cave, they watch out for the warlocks, and things like that. So that idea in and of itself is terrifying. Taking a human and deforming them and turning them into some sort of creature. But let's look more at the Righteous Province. So this cult of warlocks basically ran that area of Chile. It was almost like a shadow government. The people in the area were completely petrified of them. Now, when they were arrested, the Chilean government knew that there was a group out in that part of the country 
But it wasn't a part of the country they spent much time in. The Chilean government had other stuff going on. You had the shadow government. is almost like a mafia rule. They ran that area. But what happened in around 1880, Chile was getting involved in warfare with other countries in South America. And they realized that they had basically an insurrection in their own country they had to put down. This was called the War of the Pacific. It was all of these South American countries basically having what, what it sounds like brush wars. It's like border wars. So at some point, they dispatched a bunch of troops deep into their, deep into their country to say, hey, you need to, we need to find out what's going on back there because we're involved in these wars. We need to make sure there's nothing going on back there. When they go back there, that's when the government really learns the truth about the righteous province. They were, in the area, considered smugglers, assassins, racketeers. They, the people believed that they had these magical powers. So the government arrested, and this is all true. This is all true. We actually have court transcripts because this is only back in 1880. And the article I was reading was saying, the Smithsonian.org article, it said this is considered the last significant witch trial ever held. So we have full transcripts of testimony of the witches and stuff like that. They arrested 100 or so witches, warlocks, brought them into trial, and the confession started coming out. Now, the Mbunche was considered part of that. You had a explorer who went out to the cave and was being shown around by a warlock, and he said he saw an Mbunche run at him, a deformed man all covered in hair running at him, not Mormon Bigfoot, another guy, not Cain. During the testimony of the witch trial, people said, okay, this is what we have. We have this cave that's completely hidden. We have a magic word to open it. It's guarded by an embuche and then this other weirdo creature that looks like a pig that used to be a human as well. And inside there's a magic book that's super old. And we have a bowl of water that if you look into the water, you can learn secrets. So the government's like, oh, we don't want them to know that. They also had a flying jacket. So they also have this thing called the macoon. It was a flying or magical waistcoat. So I think that's a jacket. Is that a coat that comes down to your waist? The warlocks would put it on and they would leap into the air and say this magical word, which was Arilhu. Arilhu. I'm really sorry for my listeners who speak Spanish natively. I'm Again, I, I'm sorry. Anyways, you put the jacket on, you could fly around and you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. How do you make one of those? You have to flay up a recently buried Christian corpse or the skin of a virgin girl or a dead sorcerer. So not something you can find that hot topic. But anyways, they believed that with these waistcoats, they could fly around. They also, so, and also one of the things that the people in the area believed and was coming out during the trial was that the Righteous Province had a ghost submarine, which in 1880, I mean, we had submarines during the Civil War, but this was a submarine that they used as basically a ghost ship that could be piloted underwater. And it was you and you're like, OK, that's just a legend. But it was used to unload contraband onto the island, which is how the warlocks made their money selling black market goods. And people to this day in that area still say that that ghost ship is still out there under the waters. So that came out. That's how they're getting their black market. goods. I think from based on that story, they probably did have a submarine. I bet you if they were because they were racketeers, they were mobsters, they were telling people, you need to pay us money or something bad might happen to you tonight. My Mbunche may come into your town and poison all your crops. Your husband may be murdered. So pay us the, So people in the area were paying them protection money. They were selling black market goods. They were also assassins. You could pay them to, quote unquote, put a spell on somebody. They would just poison you. So it was like you had this group of people who... They probably believed they had magical powers, and the people in town believed they had magical powers, but everything they did was 100% real. Moving in black market goods, poisoning crops, poisoning people, they would just say, oh yeah, it was a ghost that did that, as someone's dying from arsenic poisoning. It was weird. So you could join this cult, an initiate could join the, the righteous province, They had this list of rituals. One of them was you also had to be unbaptized. So you had to be in the river every night for 15 days to wash away the baptism. You had to run around the island naked telling people how much you love the devil. And you go through this whole process. And then it gets to this weird part where they basically tell you some of the prohibitions, some of the things you can't do. And they had rules against theft, which is most probably theft towards other members of the province. 
because again, they were shaking down villagers for money. They had prohibitions against rape. Okay, that's cool. That's that's awesome. They had prohibitions against eating salt. You know, high sodium leads to early death. That makes sense. You're like, that's fairly reasonable. Don't steal, you know, don't rape people. Don't eat too much salt. And then after going over those rules, they celebrated by eating the flesh of a dead baby. No gray area, guys. Don't eat too much salt. Let's eat this baby. It's completely bizarre. Now, to be fair, a lot of this, most of this stuff came out during a witch trial. So, people, this information may have been coerce through torture out of people. This information may have been made up to get a better sentence yourself. This trial went on for a year. And in the end, like I said, 100 people were arrested. In the end, 30% of them, so about 30 of them, were just considered healers. Like local healers and people who believe that, you know, herbs and stuff like that, 11 herbs and spices will, you know, heal that wart on your face, things like that. Other people, though, were charged with manslaughter, People were charged with, like I said, racketeering, running protection schemes, and then other people were charged with just being part of an unlawful society because the Chilean government still considered this group a threat. It, w- it was basically running an entire region within their country. A year later, though, almost all of the sentences were vacated. The government was like, you know what? Just let everybody go, which is kind of a weird decision. But that was the end of the Righteous Province. Even though the leaders, people weren't in prison for long periods of time, the fact that they were arrested seemed to shut everything down. And so to this day, it's kind of been gone. The Righteous Province no longer exists. The questions that remain are this. How likely is it that they were practicing magic? And I think the answer is probably pretty likely. But I think that they were using it as a guise to instill fear. Did they really kidnap children and try to turn them into this monster? Turning someone's head every day to make it look behind the back, I don't know how physically possible that is. But you could take anybody and make them deformed by doing something horrendous. This is basically like a cryptid in that area. And and the Mbunche has popped up in popular media from time to time. I think I saw that he was in the uh, comic book Constantine um, and Swamp Thing fought one. I don't think that a cult that operated for 30 years and was shut down for one year, I don't think they would just completely disband. I think they would just get better at hiding. I find it very unlikely that this group no longer exists. So somewhere in the place of seagulls, where the Incas even said this place is full of darkness, there may still be a group, an offshoot of an offshoot of the Righteous Province. And somewhere deep in one of those caves, there may be a deformed child who was turned into an Mbunche. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.